Well, friends, our next guest was born without arms or legs. And yet this man has persevered throughout his life to become a New York Times bestselling author, world-renowned speaker, evangelist, and entrepreneur. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to Tell Us a Good Story, Mr. Nick Vujicic. Woo! Hope, can we say Nick? Can we <laughs> Hello, <keep> it Nick? <laughs> Kevin and Stephanie. Love you. How are you? Good. So excited. Was I close on the name, Nick? You were good. You were great. Good. Okay. Good. All right. I practiced that. that was, I he has that. been practicing. So, Nick, in preparation for this conversation with you, a couple things stood out to me. One... I was shocked at your sense of humor and how funny you actually are. <laughs> and then two, I was really surprised at what you've learned to do without limbs, whether it's swimming or golfing. So what typically surprises people when they see you do something, whether it's swimming or whatever? So I guess what surprises people is, uh, I guess, the mentality and optimism that they find a little bit inspiring at times. Because they just can't imagine a, a man without arms and legs driving a boat, putting his children in the tube, towing them across the lake out in East Texas. And, you know, people say, well, what, what can't you do? I'm like, well, that's a silly question. But, you know, what I try to do is figure it out, do what I can, be thankful for what I do have, uh, do my best and trust God in the rest. And it's not to say that everything's possible, but you don't know what you can achieve until you try. And yeah, look, as far as the Humor is concerned. It sounded as a child where I would have to break the ice, uh, not just with children that were older than me who could get the humor, but the even adults where they didn't know what to do with me, shake my hand, talk to me, don't talk to me. Uh, and I would just say, oh, it's pretty cold today. Can't feel my hands and just break that <laughs> ice as a kid is something that I learned would be great to also emanate up on stage as I became a, a school speaker in the young years. Can you share with Steph what you would tell kids when they ask you what happened? Because I think it's yeah, like very you know, funny. some kids that come up and say what happened. I say cigarettes, you know, <laughs> and have all these different uh, funny aspects, and uh, it's really funny. Everything Kevin and Steph up until this point is kind of just priming me to become a stand-up comedian. Actually, uh, I actually love making people laugh, uh, and it's it's just something I'm going to be doing. They ask me what do I want to do for my 40th birthday. And uh, being entertaining, holding a night where it's just open mic, improv, Nick Voyage, it's stand up, but I'm not standing up kind of thing. And I just, I think people just need to laugh a little bit more. You know, it's been a little heavy these years. It yes. has been. It absolutely has been. So I know you've shared the story a thousands of times, Nick, but can you just level set folks here in regards to your parents when they were informed of, okay, our child actually was doesn't have any limbs here because... They had sonograms and ultrasounds and all that stuff, and it never came up. Really? Correct. Yeah, my mom actually was the head of the uh, birthing suite of the local hospital that she was a nurse in. And as a midwife in Australia, you would actually take care of everything, including the epidural. Uh, so it's a very different medical system down in Australia. And so my mom and dad actually fell in love as young uh, adults, and uh, they waited for five years before they had their first child to uh, to set a foundation for their future family. Uh, they were not wealthy themselves. They were actually um, immigrants uh, fleeing communism Yugoslavia through refugee camps in 1960s. Uh, so Serbian name, Vujicic. And so when we actually had the ultrasounds done while I was in my mother's womb, um, they were so excited. They never did the measurements between the elbows and the finger and the knees to the toes to kind of estimate or guesstimate how big I'm going to be and how tall I'm going to be. And when I actually was born, that was the first time that doctors, nurses, my mom and dad found out that I was going to be born the way that I was born. And so the doctors said, we're so sorry we didn't pick it up on the sonograms to at least give you an option to abort. And my mom and dad coming from very strong Christian beliefs, they would not have done that. Uh, but even at that point, obviously, even adoption was contemplated. Uh, you can imagine the emotional roller coaster, the fear, the uncertainty, the feeling of not being qualified as a parent to have a limbless child. I mean, the doctors had no more knowledge than my mom about the, the medical aspect of this. And they actually told my parents that I would not walk and obviously proved them wrong on that. But uh, it was all quite an intense moment at that point. And uh, their parents, my parents' parents on both sides said, if you're going to give him up for adoption, we'll adopt him. But they said, no, 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 no one's going to love our son 
as much as we would. And so we're going to just embrace this. And it took four months for my mom to come to terms with it. My dad accepted it a little quicker. Uh, they had a, a, a son and a daughter after me with no disabilities. And actually, the doctors never thought that I'd ever go to school because the law in Australia in the 1980s was such that if a child had a special need, they would be segregated and not integrated. And so my mom actually went to the state education board of Victoria and used her son as an example that children with special needs should be integrated into society and the mainstream school system, which I was one of the first pioneered integrated kids. And so I knew I had no limbs, but I didn't think it was such a big deal until the kids started looking at me and teasing me. And I would ask my mom what happened. And they said, well, we don't know but God has a plan. Mm. I love that. You talk about the teasing. How did you handle that? Because I feel like bullying is so big right now. Can you kind of tell listeners how you dealt with that? I think bullying is a little bit more accentuated, if that's the right word, because of the especially three years of isolation and hypersensitivity to what people say and what people think at this point coming back, if you will, out of uh, isolation on that level with cyberbullying, though, going up and then the tenderness of the hearts and minds of young people with the quarantine measures of what has happened in the last three years where um, teen suicide, I mean, I'm, I'm considered an expert on the anti-bullying platform worldwide, uh, worked with so far five governments who live streamed me into many, many schools across their nation. We were just in Spain as a pilot test to thousands of students in Spain, and now they want it nationally. And the reason is, is because this universal thing called bullying is actually 40% of the reason as to why teenagers have contemplated or attempted suicide. And so for me as a kid, first of all, when I was in elementary school, I actually attempted suicide at age 10, mm. not believing that I would ever amount to anything or anybody or have a career, get married and be happy and just be a burden for the rest of my life to my parents and be bullied for the rest of my life. And so that didn't seem like such a good life. And so unfortunately, at age 10, I tried to drown myself in my bathtub uh, and I planned it out. And that was supposed to be my last day. I turned over in my bathtub three times to swallow enough water before you then inhale the water. But the third time I rolled over, I was stopped by one thought, which was seeing my mom and my dad crying at my grave, wishing they could have done something more. So at that point in my life at 10 years old, I said, you know what? I'm not going to leave that for my parents behind. They've done nothing but love me. And for everyone out there, I want you to know Spain, they just had a 10 year old commit suicide six weeks ago because of bullying. Uh, America, I've done 290 schools face to face with an anonymous survey asking students, have you ever thought of committing suicide pre COVID? Uh, six to 12% had thought, three to 6% had attempted, 40% of the reason because of a broken home and 40% because of bullying at school. I can tell you right now, as an expert in this field, you can double those percentages. I'll tell you right now, 12 to 24% of all teenagers in America have contemplated suicide. Six to 12% have already attempted suicide. And 40% of the reason, again, is because either brokenness at home or brokenness at the school. It's such a message that needs to be heard. And uh, we're doing all we can to help these young people know the truth of their value, the truth of their purpose, and the truth of their full potential. All right, Steph, I'm going to test you again here. What is your favorite book of all time? Uh, obviously, it's the Bible, Kevin. <laughs> yes. Nailed it. Very good. This time, you didn't say the book we wrote called You Met Her Where. But it's still a really good book. That is true. And it would make a great gift for friends or relatives on their birthday or for Christmas. Friends, you can order your copy of our book titled You Met Her Where at KevinAndSteph.com. And we will make sure to personally sign a copy for you or whoever you want. And as always, thank you for listening to Tell Us a Good Story. 
Steph, what's most important to you when it comes to building a new home? Okay. I want a builder who's an expert in what they do, is going to be honest with me, and cares about even the smallest of details. Well, thankfully, we know just the builder. You know it. It's Jay and Connie Luby with Luby Companies. Friends, don't just take our word for it. Go check out their website at lubycompanies.com. That's L-U-E-B-B-E companies.com. Let them be your builder for life. They're freaking awesome. So for all of our guests, Nick, I like to give a list of fun facts for our guests so listeners and stuff know some of the things you've done, some of you've accomplished. And of course, this will spurn some stories and conversation as well. Sounds good. Steph, are you ready for this? Yep. Nick actually beat up a kid one time at school. What? <laughs> I only headbutted him. I didn't beat him up, but I headbutted him. Yes, it is true. And it is recorded in a book. <laughs> Um, someone said, I bet you can't fight. And, you know, I'm kind of macho back then and not as humble as I am now, humbly speaking now. Um, but I said, I bet you I can. He said, meet me at the field. And I did. And uh, he was pushing me on. He said, get out of your wheelchair. And then he was on his knees, but he still had his hand. So it was still a big disadvantage. And uh, he pushed me down a couple of times and people were like, leave him alone, leave him alone. So I just charged him like a bull and had butt him in the nose and he never picked on me again. Do not do that, kids. <laughs> do not do that. And don't share that story. <laughs> I actually have a book called Stand Strong. It's um, helping teenagers to overcome bullying and other things in their life as well. And I actually expand on my school years. Uh, Stand Strong. It's a really good book for teenagers. Okay, so what did your parents say when you got home and you told them what happened? So I was like, because listen, we got the belt. When we were in trouble, they found my fingerprints. I get the belt, not the wooden spoon. And I'm like, dang it. I don't want, you know, the, the, the school to let them know first. I'm going to be the first to tell them. And so I said, mom and dad, I actually headbutt someone. They thought I was lying. And I'm like, oh, good. I didn't get punished. It's because they didn't believe me. So good. <laughs> okay, I like so that one. Fun fact number two. He mentioned this already. Uh -huh. Okay. Nick was the very first handicapped student who was permitted to attend a normal school in Australia and then was awarded the Young Citizen of the Year Award in Australia as a child in 1990. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, wait a second. Did you receive that award before or after you beat up that kid, Nick? Uh, that, well, I beat up the kid later. Okay. <laughs> okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. After you got the word. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> All right, Steph. This next fun fact is going to speak to you personally. Okay. All right. On September 25th, 2010, Nick set the world record for most hugs given out in <gasps> 60 minutes. The record that he hit was 1,749 hugs. That is one hug every 2.05 seconds for an entire hour. I would love that. <laughs> oh, I would, I am a hugger, Nick. People sometimes don't love my hugs, but I still... They're aggressive. They're very aggressive. Very aggressive. But I say I show the love of Jesus <laughs> through my hugs, Nick. Wait, my hugs are passively aggressive. They call me the hugging machine. My arms fell off after that. But listen... <laughs> We were even generous, okay? We were generous. We actually hugged people in strollers and wheelchairs as well. And some of those hugs took eight seconds. Oh, gosh. Wow. And someone heartless broke my record. Really? So I'm thinking of breaking theirs again. Yeah, I would. Okay. Was that recent? No, 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 no. I don't know how many he did, <laughs> but they did in India. Whatever. Anyway, there was debate. There was even debate, guys, about... How does an armless man hug? Can we really count it? Like, oh, no. Of course you can. Yeah, you can. Of course yes. you can. Yes, you can. So we, yes. had a, we had a rule by the Guinness Book of World Records. Their fingertips had to actually touch when they hugged me. Now, one last thing that oh. you love that you don't know. Okay. Two years ago, my son, the oldest one. Uh, Kiyoshi, he uh, he said, Daddy, I wish you had hands. I said, why is that, baby? He said, because then I could feel your hug. Oh. And he said, but don't worry. I said, why not? He said, because I'm strong and I'll hug you stronger and longer. <laughs> and I so love it's that. amazing, you know, the blessings of God. And mm -hmm. yeah, I don't have hands to hold my wife's hand, but you don't need to hold a hand. You need to hold your wife's heart. So yes. you don't need hands for that. That's really good. All right, Steph. Next fun fact. What was the movie we just watched with the kids? 
last weekend that had Dennis Quaid and Helen Hunt in it. You remember who that was about? Uh, a surfer. Yes. Bethany Hamilton. Yes. Soul Surfer. Soul Surfer. Yes. yes. One time during a speaking engagement in Hawaii, Nick was introduced to Bethany Hamilton, a surfing champion yeah. who lost her arm to a shark attack. Mm-hmm. Bethany taught Nick how to surf <gasps> while at Waikiki Beach. What? For real. For <laughs> real. I was surfing. She told me how to get up on my circle, put my arms out like this. Uh, it was so much fun. I love Bethany. She's amazing. Isn't That's that awesome? Again, awesome. another thing that he's learned how to do. That's amazing. Very cool. Very right. cool. Next fun fact. Nick married his beautiful wife. And make sure I'm saying this correctly. Con I A. Con I A. Con I A. Yeah. In 2012, they have four children. Two sons and I, a set of identical twin daughters. Mm. So how did you meet your wife then? I met her at a speaking engagement up here in North Dallas area. And uh, I met her boss, Richard Branson. So I met Richard Branson in Hollywood okay. and met her boss at the same time with the group of people that we were there at. And she said, you got to come to Dallas and meet some friends of mine. For your nonprofit org, they might start donating to you. Uh, but little did I know that I would meet my wife through that connect. And so it was love at first sight. I looked at her. She looked at me. I couldn't feel my legs. <laughs> <laughs> See? It's a sense of humor. It's fantastic. Yes. All right. To name just a few places, Nick has been featured on the BBC, 60 Minutes Australia, CBS Sunday Morning, Oprah's Life Class, USA Today, People Magazine, ABC's 2020. What's your favorite memory of being interviewed? I wonder if he met Oprah. Did you meet Oprah? I met Oprah. Okay, what was she like, Nick? She gave me a quick hug. We didn't talk prior or after, but she seems nice. Um, I'd love a coffee with Oprah one day just to talk about spirituality. But I always had a dream to meet Oprah because she was the most influential person in the world at one stage. Right. And so Pastor Rick Warren was there and he allowed me to come in when she invited him. And he said, I'll come if you bring Nick as well. And so we're talking about purpose and Jesus. And it was really, really cool. So it was uh, it was probably one of my favorite moments of interviews, if you will. I love 60 Minutes Australia, a guy called Peter Overton. 60 Minutes have never done three separate stories on the same person within the same amount of years ever in the history. Um, Hi, 60 Minutes USA. Hi. (laughs) Let me know if you want one. Um, But yeah, it's been fun traveling the world, 77 countries, 23 presidents, spoke in front of 10 national governments, been on television to a billion people in China, a billion people outside of China. Largest event was 800,000 people in Ukraine in 2017 and uh, televised to 53 million people at once. That's our largest audience so far. So I talk about my faith through our ministry, Life Without Limbs, which is a nonprofit organization. And then we talk about anti-bullying in school student circuits, companies, they get me to motivate everyone. And I've been doing that for a while, but now I'm really shifted into entrepreneurship as well, doing a couple startups. Do you ever have... Like where you get super nervous before you speak? Like or... in front of 800,000 people? Yeah. Or is you just like, <laughs> right. I got this. No big deal. I was nervous the first six minutes in front of 800,000 people only because there were 500 windows looking at me for a sniper to, to shoot me. There's just no way that you can mitigate the risk of someone not killing you on that kind of event. Oh, uh, but thank okay. God we haven't had any terrible things. We've had bomb car threats and... A grenade at my property, a being kicked out of a bank, a spying drone, lawsuits, fake articles about me, um, nervousness as a speaker to be in front of a crowd or a president. I don't really these days after 3,500, uh, your palms stop sweating. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. So you just, uh, you rattled off a bunch of stuff that I had researched. Any good stories, Nick, about meeting a president? Gosh. Um, that you're allowed to share. <laughs> yeah, we've had a lot behind doors and a lot I can't share. But when a president cries behind doors. Really? And says, thank you for coming to our country. 
and 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 the government is good and if i told you which government it was and is people would judge me but a lot of people don't like that country i'm not speaking about ukraine or russia or something hot right now but it was amazing to meet the minister of education to meet the minister of this the minister of that and you know what they did every single time we met with everyone we prayed Mm. And when you see a country righteously running, now not to say that there's a perfect country out there nor a perfect admin, but yeah, outside of the US, there's a country that's just the David versus Goliath right now. And, and it's in the EU. And I'll never forget that country. I'll never forget. And they're still in power. And so um, I just love authentic. I hate anything else. I just don't care. For people yeah. who are not authentic, I mean, sure, God bless you, but I ain't going to spend a minute with you unless you actually can look me in the eye and let me see your soul mm. and let's talk. Steph, what is one of the most asked questions we get about tell us a good story? Uh, do I really get that excited? <laughs> Besides that one. Oh, how do we get all these incredible guests? Correct. Yes. And some of our best conversations have been with guests who our listeners have reached out to us and said, you should talk to this person. To name just a few, Nick Vujicic, Coach Tom Ryan, Carol Mutika were all recommendations from our listeners. So if there's someone you would like us to interview and think they might be a great fit for Tell Us a Good Story, please let us know at kevinandsteph.com. You don't even have to personally know them. True, but do me a favor. Before you submit their names, please make sure they are still alive. <laughs> That <laughs> has actually happened, and it is super hard for me to find their contact information. But regardless, thank you for listening to Tell Us a Good Story. All right, final fun fact here. Nick's motivational videos are all over the internet, right? His six books include Life Without Limbs, which is said to have sold over a million copies. His newest book is titled 12 Keys to a Full Life, and he's trying to get it translated into as many languages mm. as possible. So how is that going? And can you share with listeners more about that book, Nick? Thank you, Kevin and Stephanie, for this opportunity. Listen, um, I'm always somebody that as I've hugged many people, the most memorable hugs that I've ever had are the poorest of the poor. Mm. And it's these poorest of the poor that as I've traveled 77 countries, I know they don't have money to get a book. And if I want to write a book to change a person's life, why should money be a reason as to why someone's life ain't touched? And these poorest of the poor, it's really interesting. Many of them still have access to a phone, an ebook. And so what's interesting is as I've now written books that I think three to four million copies of which have been sold and translated into 31 languages worldwide, hope needs to be translated. Hope needs to be free. And so I always want to do what I can to help people find what I thought I could never have, which is hope. It's been about seven years since I've actually released a book. And I promised myself with all the stuff that everyone's gone through, especially the last three years, that my next book is going to be for free in an ebook format for free, audiobook format for free, and a video read, me looking into the camera and reading the teleprompt, reading my book, but also translating everything into up to 66 languages. Oh, wow. And this will be the first book to be able to have multiple languages embedded on it. And it'll be voiced over, but it's AI driven. It's human proofed, so it's perfectly accurate. And I thought, well, I, I normally get paid to get a book, not normally pay for production for right. something like it. So I thought to myself with 14 million social media fans out there who'd love to have this book for free out there, instead of purchasing my next book for 10 bucks, five bucks, wherever they're from, let's pay it forward. And on givesendgo.com slash Nick V book, you'll see new video content of me talking about this and even showing on my YouTube channel exactly how it's going to look. I've recorded a video of me reading my first book, Life Without Limits, and you see the mouse moving and changing the language while I'm talking just oh. to give everyone the conceptual idea of what it's going to look like when I look into the camera and you can change the language while I'm talking. So again, it's going to be a free book 
It's going to be 12 keys to live a full life to unlock your faith, courage, and resilience. I think we all need a little bit more faith. We all need a little bit more resilience. And we all need a little bit more courage right now to dream again, to go again, and keep on moving forward and never giving up. So that's the whole vision. And if any of your listeners and their friends want to get on board with this, it's a simple campaign. My birthday's coming up on December 4, and there's nothing else that I'd want for my 40th birthday other than to have the next book underwritten and help many more millions of people out there know that there is hope for them in their language and for free. Well, listeners, for more information about Nick, you can go to his Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. It's at Nick Vujicic, his same things as website. And then we'll put that link as well in the show notes on our website. So you can click right on it and go to that website. Well, Nick, you're fantastic, sir. Again, I love your personality. And congratulations on soon joining Steph and I in the, in the 40, 40 and over 40 club. club. Yes. It's the best. <laughs> Just keeps love getting better. It. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Love you very much. And hello to all your listeners. Don't give up. And it's been an honor and a joy to connect with you. So thank you so much. Friends, we want to encourage you to please follow us wherever you listen to this, whether it's on the Apple Podcast app, iHeartRadio, Spotify, or one of the other platforms. You guys, it's completely free. And while you're there, feel free to give us a rating or a nice review. Thank you for listening to Tells a Good Story.